out of all the records you've produced or been a part of, um, what has been your most profitable record out of your whole collection? Profitable? What record I, did you make the most money on? Um, as a producer or as a label? Let's, let's, let's do both. Probably as a producer, probably Miss New Booty, I would have to say. And pro as a venture uh, uh, soldier, yeah, clearly, like you know, the, you know, you can look those numbers up, and uh, you know that was that was good. The whole Interscope situation, even before before Soldier was signed, the Interscope situation was was lovely, you know. So uh, yeah. Now, what's probably your favorite record, money or not money wise? What's your personal favorite record that you've been a part of? out of your whole collection. Wow. And mm. why? You know what? Does it have to be like one? Because I got a couple for different reasons. Okay, go ahead. Um, the last one I'll start with was probably Trilly and Prince Rick. The throw it off, fuck everybody. Just because that was a part of my Interscope fallout, too, because, you know, I was coming off the heels of Soldier's second album, and when, when we signed them, they had a record called Mr. Hit That Ho that was blazing in Dallas, you know what I'm saying? So I signed them up, shot the video, did all this without Interscope, so I'm I'm on the roll now, so... I walked that in the Interscope like, yo, y'all ready? Round two. And there was resistance. You know what I'm saying? And um, it was just things going on in that building that I've never been a political guy. I've never been good at office politics. Never been good at that shit. And so um, we lost the record. You know what I'm saying? And um, I, that's one of the... I don't know if I lost any other hits like to me that was a that was a hit record it was already a hit um but the market of dallas was catching flat because they had some stuff coming out of there they were getting money and not performing you know the labels were signing up those dallas acts i won't call no names because you know i actually liked some of those records that was coming out of there and uh for, for whatever reason they weren't performing the way that you know people thought that they should and so you know, it was just a lot of funny stuff going on at, at, at in, in the building. So we lost that record. And to, I don't want to go through the whole thing, but to make a long story short, we we gave them throwed off in a, in a situation like, yo, I signed you with a hit. Take this record because the other guys that were on the record, um, uh, Soulless, they were signed to my brother. Once again, Young Mogul. They had the record, wasn't really doing nothing with it. Gave it to Trilly and Prince Rick. They blazed it. And um, they went, took it and got it buzzing in Dallas. And, you know, that's when I left Interscope. That's right after, right when I left Interscope. I was like, yo, take this record free and clear. Like, because I, I felt so bad about fucking them over with the, uh, the Mr. Hit That Ho. And it was like, man, fuck that. We rolling with you. Right, man, we put that shit out, man, and as a, that's that's probably been my only straight indie record. Like I went through indie distribution with that, and we sold over a hundred thousand singles on that through Malico. You know what I'm saying? Just you know, flipping the money, you know, radio, all that shit, and um, you know that that was probably when it was out. That was one of the high, and people, a lot of people still don't know I had anything to do with that record. You know what I'm saying? So that was a personal victory, especially coming from Interscope. Now, if Interscope had signed Throwed Off, that shit would have sold two, three million records. Easy. That record was blazing hot. You know what I'm saying? And so that was a personal victory. Uh, by far, probably the, the just the overall record that was my favorite probably would be the Whisper song because it changed, that record changed my life. That's when the whole Mr. Collie Park and the whole run of my, my sound 
all of that started with that song and that's what separated us from crunk which we we had a big role in that sound also but it's like you can't fight for a title like that i i believe in fighting through your work and not we don't stand and jump up and say yo we did this you know so when we did the whisper song that kind of just shut it down for the past and moved us right into the then future and so that record right there that is the collie park sound that's the brand that's the collie park brand because before that it was dj smurf you know what i'm saying and so before that record it's got to be whistle white twerk that's just classic that's just classic shit that's the twerk a lot of kids think that's the record that started twerking you know for me i know back that ass up came before that if i and there was other records that came before that but i'm saying the, the songs that actually are credited for twerking was white twerk and that changed my sound from the booty shape music because i was doing bass music before that so those three records was white twerk uh weight and uh throw it off when you got your first big paycheck <laughs> <laughs> What'd you spend it on? Paid for my house that I was living in at the time. Paid for it. Because, you know, at the, at the time, it was like, I don't know how long this shit going to last. <laughs> I know I got this chick. I don't know if I'm going to get another one. Paid for my house. Yeah. Worst financial decision ever. I invested in in a in a in a business here. I can't I can't say the name because confidentiality. Uh, and it was something that I personally didn't really know much about, but I just saw it and I just thought like this can't lose. That's why I do. I learned very early on to do what I do and what I know about because if I got to depend on another person that's totally out of my hands and I had no control over this investment and um it was it was a six-figure investment uh it was a I couldn't lose investment and uh I just gave didn't even really think about it like here take the shit let's go and um that shit I mean that might be the biggest flop it was none music that might have been the biggest tank flop shit I ever did in my life the lesson I learned like I say you could invest but don't just because you want to be cool to be able to say I own all these shits and businesses and all that have some kind of say so in what you invest in at that time I was I was I was feeling myself financially you know what I'm saying I, I was like I got this you know to to to, to whatever just to do whatever with and um I always, I'll never either loan money or invest money that if I don't get it back, I'm going to be fucked up. I've always been like that. If I give you $10 and I know I'm going to need that $10 to, to complete my rent next month, I ain't going to give it to you. I don't give a damn how close we are or whatever because I don't expect you to pay me that shit back. I'm black. I come from, you know, that kind of shit. Motherfuckers do not pay you back. So I always go into any business venture personal decision if i need that shit or if i feel like i'm gonna need it you can't get it 